Dear friends, we are delighted to welcome you once again to our channel dedicated to the environment. Today, I would like to speak about a very topical issue, namely, extended producer and importer responsibility. I assume that most of you are probably acquainted with this topic to some extent. However, Today, I would like to look at it from a somewhat different angle. I will not analyze in detail how this works in Russia, but rather will try to make a comparison and see how this is done in Russia and in neighboring countries. Let's try to get to grips with this matter. Here is what extended producer responsibility, which is also abbreviated to EPR, involves in a nutshell. The substance of the concept is most probably well known, and it consists of the producer or the importer of a product which has respectively produced the product or imported it into country, being obliged to ensure that such product is disposed of at the end of its life cycle. In Russia, this obligation was introduced by statute in 2015. However, it is worth noting that in a global context, this idea is much older. It was first put forward in Sweden in 1990 by a famous activist Thomas Lindquist, who is a Swedish ecologist. As early as 2001, the OECD published a guidance manual for the governments of the organization's member states. Currently, the concept is implemented practically in all developed global economies. The purposes of this concept are basically similar in all countries. First and foremost, the purpose is to implement the fair polluter pace principle. In addition, the purpose is to prevent new waste from being formed and to create a closer product life cycle. This certainly involves producing easily recyclable products and extending their life in general. And of course, launching and developing recycling. As for the items subject to EPR, in most countries they include basically the same products. They naturally include electrical and electronic equipment, for instance, batteries and accumulators, which are well known to us. Packaging certainly is also on the list. It is probably the fact known to most people that packaging actually accounts for half of global waste. Therefore, packing is a priority concern for the government when the issue arises of who is responsible for waste. In addition, items subject to EPR certainly include household chemicals, cars, spare parts and oils. Office accessories, carpets and medicines are also classified as items subject to EPR. There are many different types of producer and importer responsibility. However, in general, producer and importer responsibility can be classified as one of the four types that is implemented in one way or another in most countries. The first type can loosely be called simple financial responsibility. It involves the producer and the importer being responsible solely for the financing of measures to collect and dispose of waste. Thus, for instance, the United Kingdom uses what are called packaging recovery notes that are sold for financing to be obtained for implementing relevant measures. The second type of responsibility can loosely be classified as financial responsibility under contracts with municipalities. This involves the producer and the importer concluding a contract with the local authorities and paying them for the service of collecting and disposing of specific products. And this is where the EPR responsibility ends. Moreover, there is a more serious type of producer and importer responsibility, which involves organizational responsibility under EPR, being partially vested in the producer and partially in the municipality. However, the producer alone provides all the financing. Thus, for instance, municipalities are in charge of collecting household waste, while the producer is in charge of recycling and extracting useful properties from the waste. This approach is implemented in Belgium, for instance. And the fourth approach, which is the most stringent one with respect to the producer and importer, is an approach where 
the producer and importer bear full responsibility, both financial and organizational, for the product that has been produced. Thus, for instance, in France, a producer of electronic equipment is fully responsible for collecting and recycling the products it has produced. For this purpose, the producer may engage professional contractors or have private infrastructure, which allows waste to be collected and recycled. For instance, this applies to the packaging of goods in Germany. As I have already mentioned, in some countries, and in the EU in particular, the concept of extended producer responsibility has been implemented for over 30 years already. However, regardless of such a long period, a well-adjusted mechanism of implementing extended producer and responsibility cannot be implemented in every case without fail. In Europe, many current issues as well are triggered specifically by the fact that this approach still cannot be implemented, and there are several reasons for this. Most EU member states use the mechanism of collective responsibility. This means that there is a system operator for EPR, and there are producers that are responsible only for financing it, and the system operator responsible for the final result. Therefore, a specific producer lacks motivation, for instance, to use more environmentally friendly packaging. Producers that use packaging that is not environmentally friendly hide behind the backs of those who use more environmentally friendly packaging. Eventually, the operator is responsible for the final result. Another issue is that for decades after EPR was introduced, EU member states have been using refractory packaging. For instance, only in 2021 was the production and use of disposable plastic products prohibited in the EU. Previously, such products were freely produced, and the relevant directive has already been implemented in several, albeit not all, countries. In particular, Germany has already included this directive in the domestic legislation. However, another concern emerges at this point, regardless of such prohibition, since producers still need to somehow package their goods and many of them are planning to use or are already using composite paper packaging. But an issue arises at this point. Paper packaging and composite paper packaging cannot in every instance be recycled at the same facilities. And this is also a problem that still cannot be solved. Another issue is that Europe, in practical terms, lacks any differentiation of payment rates depending on how refractory the packaging is that you produce. For instance, foam polystyrene. Actually, different producers, one which produces more environmentally friendly packaging and another which produces less environmentally friendly packaging, pay the same rate. Therefore, a specific producer lacks motivation to pack its products in more environmentally friendly packaging, since, as I have already said, a producer that manufactures bad packaging and one that manufactures good packaging pay the same. Of course, this situation is not commonplace. France can be taken as a positive example. In France, the relevant tariff discount can be up to 100%, depending on what extent your packaging is environmentally friendly. Another issue is that it is impossible to exercise control over many producers' goods in the packaging. This difficulty is also widely discussed in Russia. It stems from the issue that when a product is manufactured in packaging, there is no alternative. Either the producer of the product or the producer of the packaging can be responsible for the packaging. Most EU member states basically implement the principle whereby the producer of the product is responsible for the product in the packaging. Russia implements the same principle. However, at this point, most countries face the issue that there are numerous producers of goods in packaging and there are many fewer producers of the packaging. For instance, according to some sources, in Russia there are around 4 million producers of goods in packaging and around 4,000 producers of the packaging. Therefore, administering payments from the form and the letter requires an absolutely different expenditure of effort from the state, and its effectiveness will certainly be different. For instance, in Germany, there are quite a few companies for a country that has over 30 years implemented this concept that simply evade the EPR obligations. 
According to some sources, the number of such companies is at least 25%. Therefore, the German government is facing significant difficulties in this respect. And some time ago, major fines were even introduced for such evasion. In some cases, the fines may reach 200,000 euro. However, this unfortunately doesn't make the system more effective. Another issue is the abuse of the EPR operators. There can often be several EPR operators, since different EU countries have different schemes. However, eventually they monopolize the market and can set overstated rates. And this is also an issue that the government of EU member states have faced. This issue is typical for Germany, for instance. Currently, in Germany there are as many as nine EPR system operators, and the government opted to go down this path in 2003. Until 2009, Germany had a single operator. However, this was not quite in line with the principle of competition, and it was decided that such a situation on the market was not quite normal so other operators should be allowed to assess the market. Unfortunately, this resulted only in the nine operators actually obtaining specific authority and a specific position in the market, actually forming a cartel. Though it is collective rather than individual, as was the case with a single operator, this still gives rise to the question of their monopoly position. Another issue, which is a curious and typical for Germany, is, for instance, that Germany is actively exporting plastic waste to other countries. If you think this is a recycling effort, you are mistaken. Until 2018, China very actively imported plastic waste from other countries. However, in 2018, China prohibited such import, and therefore since then, Germany has been obliged to redirect its export flows to other countries. At present, Germany is trying to export them to Indonesia, Turkey and other countries which, as part of the general concept of fighting global waste, is probably not a good way out. By the way, amendments that are currently being discussed in Germany for these issues to be overcome in that country. Firstly, it is being discussed that the nine operators should be liquidated and that the concept of single operator should again be applied. And secondly, it is being discussed that responsibility should be shifted from the producer of goods in the packaging to the producer of the packaging, as I have already said, since administrating such producers is an issue which is a completely different extent of complexity, and it can be implemented. A couple of words about how EPR is implemented directly by our neighbors, Kazakhstan and Belarus. In Kazakhstan, this regulatory framework was introduced in 2016. Kazakhstan has already had a single operator. Until 2022, this function was performed by the so-called operator EPR. However, after a large-scale theft was identified in 2021, its place was taken by Jasil Damu GSC. The positive new developments, which have already been implemented in Kazakhstan and which, we believe, could and are planned to be replicated in Russia, are, as far as we understand, as follows. Kazakhstan has created the single Ekkodi business digital platform, which unites all the stages of handling secondary raw materials and all the participants in this process. In addition, Kazakhstan has also implemented a motivation system. Thus, Kazakh enterprises are entitled to subsidies for each kilogram of plastic sent to be recycled. These brilliant ideas, such as, for instance, creating a single digital platform and introducing a motivation aspect, have certainly proved to be highly effective. As far as we understand, our government is also considering creating a single digital platform similar to that in Kazakhstan, which is extremely prudent and definitely making provision for the motivating enterprises. Now I would like to speak about Belarus. Actually, as surprising as it may seem, Belarus made the first step to implement EPR as back as in 2002. 
In Belarus, just as in Russia, there are two basic scenarios for performing this obligation – to enter into a contract with the operator or to dispose of the waste independently. Enterprises mainly use the first option. Belarus has a single operator, which is the public institution operator of secondary material resources. It is interesting that in Belarus, responsibility for a product in packaging has long been imposed on the producer of the packaging. And, just as it is currently the case in Russia, producers of packaging and business were very concerned that this would significantly increase the cost price of products put in them out of the reach of the end user or would simply kill the packaging business. Since it turned out that after this concept was introduced, the cost price of products increased only by 9%, which was unnoticed and didn't result in a wave of bankruptcies of packaging companies, as had been expected and as business representatives had feared. Currently, Belarus has a scheme for collecting and recycling municipal household waste, which was formed by using monetary funds intended for EPR. Belarus is also using the mechanism for compensating the costs of collectors and suppliers of secondary raw materials. Regarding EPR in Russia, in Russia this concept was introduced in 2015. In Russia, as in many other countries, there are two notorious ways to perform this obligation. Either to carry out disposal independently with one's own infrastructure, by engaging professional contractors, or by engaging associations, or to pay the environmental charge to the state budget. However, since 2015, there have been quite a lot of complaints with respect to the regulation that was introduced then. According to the Vice Prime Minister Viktoria Abramchenko, no waste processing facilities have emerged in the country on a large scale since then. People are actually paying for the disposal of waste, and the producers and importers are not interested in using more environmentally friendly materials in production. Therefore, on 28 December 2020, a concept to improve the institution of EPR was approved. This concept involved implementing several important principles, establishing a system of target figures for disposal with a breakdown by groups of waste, appointing a federal body or an organization responsible for implementing EPR, determining only independent disposal or payment of the environmental charge as a way to perform EPR obligations, and disallowing associations from performing this obligation, developing a mechanism to determine and confirm whether producers and importers have performed the obligation to dispose of the waste, updating the list of goods and packaging to be disposed of, and in particular, this is the issue that I have spoke about a little earlier, determining a more detailed and specific list of packaging. It is also proposed to gradually increase the disposal standard by at least 10% annually. All types of goods taking into account the transition period, except for packaging, with respect to which a 100% disposal standard should be immediately introduced. Prioritizing independent disposal, calculating the environmental charge, if an enterprise has decided to pay it, based on double the disposal standard, differentiating the rates of environmental charge depending on to what extent the packaging or the product is refractory, forming a uniform information system, which will be a digital platform operated by Russian environmental operator and which will unite all of those participating in the EPR system. The government has worked together with the business to develop a whole range of different draft laws. The most recent initiative that has become known from open sources is that, since May 2022, the government has been developing a new draft law that amends the law on waste and that contains the following proposals. The entire responsibility for the packaging should be shifted from the producers of goods in packaging to the producers of packaging. A 100% packaging disposal standard should be introduced from 2025. Associations should be completely excluded from the EPR mechanism, and moreover, the environmental charge should be made targeted, or, as the saying goes, earmarked, so that it is subsequently used solely for the purposes of disposal. We will see 
what the results prove to be of the above legislative initiatives, and we will monitor whether they are implemented. It is clear that the topic of extended producer responsibility is very complex. Please leave your comments if it is something of interest to you. I will try to speak about the aspects uh, that interest you in more detail. Please write in the comments who you believe should be responsible for waste – the producer or the state? And which do you see as the most prudent mechanism for regulating the issue? This is all for now. Thank you and goodbye.